It gave me identity. It wasn't something we did. I found my identity in Islam. It defined who I was. I was told what was expected of me. It was very clear. Raised in a strict Islamic home, Taufik Kotman El did his best to be a good Muslim. But he never felt he measured up. I remember looking up to the sky as a child and um, just feeling like I, I was never doing it right. I wasn't praying the right way. Um, I, I didn't know um, all of the verses to the surahs and the prayers that we were supposed to be praying. And this is who I am. Like if this defines who I am and I'm not doing it right, then who am I? What am I? Um, there must be something wrong with me. Taufik's father was a leader in their mosque and Muslim community in Rhode Island, and their family faithfully adhered to Islamic life. But his mother, Davida, began seeing another side of Islam that disturbed her, the senseless murders of innocent people by radical Muslim terrorists. One day I was walking down the street, and I was thinking about how much I looked like to anyone who didn't know me that I could be a terrorist. And I had a hard time squashing a fly. And uh, so that, that bothered me. I was just very unhappy, uncomfortable, um, and I just wanted a change. Davida soon got her chance to break away from Islam. Crime had been increasing in the neighborhood, and Davida and her husband agreed that she would move Taufik and three of his siblings to San Antonio, Texas. Duty bound by the mosque, Taufik's father stayed behind. For Davida, the time for change had come. When I walked away from Islam, I didn't walk away from Islam into something else. I walked away into nothing. Then she started attending a Christian church with a friend. Eventually, Davida accepted Jesus Christ as her savior. She hoped her children would follow, but was met with much resistance. To let go of Islam is to let go of my identity, is to let go of my father, is to let go of my, my, my friends and everything I knew. And to being taken to this, this church where they were telling me to believe all the stuff that I had been told all my life is idolatry and, and, and blasphemous and hell worthy was no easy task. Reluctantly, Taufik went to church with his mother, but a resentment towards her and God began to grow. And now, away from his father and the Muslim community, his ties to Islam faded, and he started partying with friends and became engrossed with the hip-hop culture. I was extremely hungry, looking for some type of world to belong in. I loved, um, you know, hip-hop, and the music that I was listening to was, was very profane. And I said, okay, I'm going to find my outlet in this music thing. And so I did. Uh, I wrote all the time, I rapped all the time. I would sneak out of my, my, my house, go to parties. Um, I was smoking cigarettes in the backyard. I would get weed from school. His mother knew the best thing she could do was pray. Not only praying myself for him, but praying with others for him and just trusting and believing God every step of the way. I wanted to chase my sin and she was very intentional about blocking me uh, as much as she could, and so I went around her. Taufik eventually moved in with a cousin and began selling drugs, but even then, his mother never gave up on him. I'm high all the time. My mother was still taking me to the church, still being there for me, still having a, an ear. I mean, she's walked with me through this whole thing. When his cousin heard that Taufik had been attending a Christian church, he kicked him out. No money, no food, no prospect, no hope. Um, and at this time, I was extremely depressed. I, I had nothing, no identity. Completely out of options, he called on the one he had been avoiding. I just said, God, like, I don't know who you are, but, like, I need your help. I need something here. His answer would soon come. He got a job working at a Christian conference in Chicago, where the hip-hop group Cross Movement was performing. The music got his attention, but when the lead singer presented the gospel of Jesus, Taufik was captivated. The other church I was at, they they had given me little, um, you know, I like to say like they gave me like little puzzle pieces. And you know, when you're putting a puzzle together, you need to see the box so you can see the picture. Well, that's what he did. Not only did he give me the, the picture, but he gave me the rest of the pieces to put the whole thing together. And he it made sense now. After the concert, 
Tawfiq went to speak to him. He just pressed me and said, you need to examine Jesus Christ and who he is. I challenge you to look into him and see why he's so amazing, so beautiful, um, and why Islam doesn't even compare. He took him up on his challenge and began studying about Jesus. Tafik says that as he did, he couldn't escape the truth. So he asked God to forgive him and accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. I fell on my knees and I called out to him and said, I've been living a lie. This is, I've been fake this whole time. I didn't know you, but now I wanna know you. I wanna know this God that people have been preaching to me about. I wanna know Jesus. Tafik says that in Jesus Christ, he finally found his true identity. Over the years, he's learned more and more about the love of God and now shares that with his wife, Michelle, his children, and his mom. I am so, so grateful for what God has done in his life and is doing in his life, what he's allowing God to do in his life, what I'm seeing in his family, with him as a husband, as a father. He's a mighty man of God. He really is. Although I was an enemy of him, he saw fit to love me and send his son to die for me, to wash my sins away, that I don't have to face his wrath. I'm gonna have eternity. And I'm gonna be able to be with him forever. Um, I am thankful to be a recipient of grace, to be a vessel of mercy. I'm thankful to be saved.